girl, you won't believe what's going down in the music world right now. Burna Boy, our African giant, is out here screaming Diddy owns me. Can you imagine the same burner who was on top of the world with his Grammy win is now saying he's trapped by the music mogul? Like how does a collab turn into a whole hostage situation? We're about to spill all the teeth on how the burner's dream deal with Diddy turned into a total nightmare. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll be looking at the music industry real differently. Well, what I said was, is that, isn't it weird that the government was so interested in Diddy's baby all that they took a thousand bottles away from his house? If the government took a thousand bottles of baby oil and somebody had things what appeared to be baby oil, and then you have to listen to the prosecutor. He said that they seized a thousand bottles what allegedly to be baby oil. Allegedly to be baby oil. So that's telling people that it wasn't baby oil. And people think that that was baby oil, they out they mind. I don't believe it was baby oil. Yo, bro, when they went up in there, they knew what they was going to find. They knew what was ever in that baby oil or that, that, that those bottles that appeared to be baby oil, they knew about that at first. You got to realize nine times out of ten, that individual that got caught at the airport, they were supposed to be their carrier told them what they was doing and what they had. I wouldn't put him past that he told them everything. So when they went up in there, they knew they had to take whatever was out there and that thing that appeared to be baby all, they took that. They got to test every last one of them. Let's go back a little and see how our boy Burner went from Nigerian heartthrob to global superstar faster than you can say ye. Burna Diani Unugulu began making waves in Nigeria with his distinctive Afro-fusion sound, serving up his left and right, and before we knew it, he was the talk of the town with his album. Do you remember, girl? When Burna Boy was on top of the world Grammy in hand African giant for real. The streets are saying it ain't all glitter and gold. We all believed Berna was living his best life when he was featured on magazine covers, performing at sold-out shows, and rubbing shoulders with the biggest names in the industry. However, as they say, all that glitters ain't gold. The African giant had everyone and their mama dancing, and even earned him his first Grammy nomination. Let's see how much, let, let's see how many of those come back to be baby all. Bro, listen to me, Costco's don't sell that much baby all. Well, you know, sell that much baby oil. Yeah, I don't know any store that sell that much baby oil. I know Costco, they came out and said that they don't even sell baby oil. My sentiments exactly. <laughs> but you personally, right? What do you believe was in the baby oil? If you ever seen a massage parlor being raided and they walking out the people, do they take the massage all with them when they go? No. They just walk out the people who are being arrested. If you ever seen a person getting arrested and the people being arrested in those brothel houses, do they take out the stuff in the brothel houses? No, they don't. They take the individuals who are being arrested out the brothel houses. For them to take a thousand bottles of baby oil, it's like that they did not leave one. They left people there, but they ain't leave not one bottle. Nobody needed no baby oil. So my whole thing about it is, is that there was something in that other than baby oil. That's why they took all the bottles. And nine times out of 10, if I would give it a wild guess, it was, and like some of the people told me, it was probably that GHB. What's that? I think it's gamma hydrox, hydrox, uh, I don't, I, I looked it up, bro. Let me see. 
See if I can find it. I know this is it is this is just showing everything like that, but oh no 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 I'm, I'm, let me yo somebody tap dance or sing or do something you know what I'm saying while I'm doing this oh here you go right here it's gamma hydroxy butyric butyric what is it effect on the body it's a euphoria drowsiness. Decrease anxiety and memory impairment. It works on the nervous system and gives you this feeling of euphoria. So they take that and rub it on it and you forget who you are, what you're doing. It can also give you memory loss. Drowsiness. And that's under the DEA. The Dep uh, Drug Enforcement Administration .gov. We were all scratching our heads trying to figure out why a star at the top of his game would be feeling down when Berna started posting cryptic messages on social media. One minute he was talking about success, and the next he was talking about feeling trapped. It was like trying to solve a puzzle with half the piece missing. This is where things get really interesting in Kansas. Rumors began to circulate faster than a tornado. People whispered that Berner wasn't as happy as he seemed to be. The sea when Diddy, the music mogul, first appeared, we all assumed it was a match-made hip-hop song. As time passed, we began to notice the first signs of trouble in paradise. Heaven Diddy's industry connections and marketing prowess made it seem obvious to team up with Berna, the rising star of Africa, but something isn't adding up. Why would a star like Bern, who was already shining bright on his own, need Diddy's help? It's like hiring a swimming coach when you're already winning gold medals. It was like watching a vehicle wreck in slow motion, and we couldn't take our eyes off Berna as he began dropping tiny bombs about artistic differences and feeling like he wasn't in control of his own songs during interviews. You not even gay men because you won't claim it. No, you want to sit around and pretend to like bitch. That's what y'all do. And then you get these hard Jocelyn so I'm just like curious. these are these are the you like half man bitches. no disrespect but Jocelyn rough <laughs> them shoulders is and the way she like running up on I already know she done strapped up on you ooh So, Jack, let me ask you. There's one, the, the shock, some of the shocking things. I hear that heard. mean with a harness. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, not a harness. Yeah. So, I, I got to ask you this. I'm sure somebody's already asked you this, but have you ever been to a P. Diddy party? Yeah, several, many, honestly. And so, can you take us through, like, what goes on, like, when you were there? What did I say when y'all asked me about? The why was the T.D. Jakes at the Diddy party? Yeah. What'd I say? Money. Money. And sex. That's it. That's correct. Were you surprised that there were so many cameras in his houses? No. That he's recording these. Of course. He is the J. Edgar Hoover of hip hop. Mm. Okay. Y'all didn't see him put on the pyramid where the skirt? <laughs> So let me ask you, when you hear that Cassie was told to hire male escorts to come in the, what they call freak offs now, yeah. um, that is something, is that something normal that yeah. happens in Hollywood? Yeah. Freak offs. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Everybody know that. I've been saying it. Yeah. Yeah. What, how many times I got some, these niggas is wild. So do you feel like people, when they hear, uh, pink cocaine young Miami has to bring across that's Wait, the two the, the two C yeah the two C that's what they call I got, no I found out I talked to my drug guy that's cause I wanted to be informed cause people was calling the two C that's calling it the two C I didn't know which one it was so I talked to my drug guy and my drug guy filled me in and then it made perfect sense two C talk to him Drugs with Jaguar. <laughs> Let's talk. Just Drugs <laughs> education. <laughs> one on one. So 2C is the cocaine. But 
they take the kettle and cook it up. And they, they fold it into the cup. Now, if you don't know what kettle is, kettle is what they call on the street special cat. It's a veterinary drug. It's a horse tranquilizer. Now, gay men have been using this for years. See, back in the day, if you went to a gay party or a gay rave, there were certain drugs that you would always find on hand. Viagra, ecstasy, Special K, and cocaine. Now, see, the cocaine keep you up all night, but unfortunately, it gives you limp noodle because of what the blood flow is. So the, who wants to fuck with a half hard dick all night? So that's why you had the Viagra to make sure that the, the dick involuntarily stays hard while you're numbing your fucking self with the coke. Now see the ketamine, that's a horse tranquilizer. So that relaxes all your muscles. You could get fucked by 80 fucking um, ton gorillas. You wouldn't feel a thing. So now your dick is going to stay hard. You numbed up. And you high, you got the ketamine in you, so you don't feel shit. And then you add the, the ecstasy to put in the feeling that you've now blocked out. And now you got a party. Freak off cocktail. Yeah. You may be asking yourself, how bad could this deal really be? Well, let me tell you, it's not just bad, it's downright scandalous. What if Burner Boy's contract with Diddy is so twisted that it dwarfs the old fashioned record deals? Let's examine what we know about this relationship between Berna and Diddy. On paper, it seems like a match made in heaven the African giant Berna boy and Diddy, the bad boy of hip-hop, teaming up. You might think it's all champagne and hit records, but the streets are telling us that there's more to this story than meets the eye. The contract likely appeared to be fairly standard at first glance. Diddy's label would take care of marketing, distribution, and all the behind-the-scenes work allowing the burner to concentrate on making music sound nice. However, there is always fine print, and this fine print includes selling your soul to the devil, honey. There are times when these music contracts are more complex than attempting to decipher your ex's mixed signals. Let me tell you, some of the clauses we're discussing can be more cunning than your friend who constantly forgets her wallet at brunch. These clauses cover everything from royalties and advances to merchandise and touring, I know a lot of people want to hear these stories and everything like that, because this is stuff that happened back in the day. And then maybe that if they knew there was going to ever be a YouTube or they knew there was going to ever be social media, uh, a lot of the stuff probably wouldn't have got played out like it did. But things happen and, and these are just stories from the past. I would like to use that as, uh, what you call that? Um, just, just, to, just to clear the facts up what's going on. But it all started, we was in Atlanta. And this story starts when I'm with Puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping, right? He's shopping, getting his stuff and everything like that. So, you know, this is the first time I was ever in an exotic bookstore with Puff. So, you know, I'm giving him his space. He's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that, because they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he got to go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he's going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one point he, <laughs> he picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a, quite a few of them down. I'm like, yeah, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said butt plugs. And I was like, hey, yo, <laughs> I, was, I was messing with him. Because people don't understand, you know, we was, we, we was like friends. He was a part of the same gang. So I'm still going to tease him. I'm still going to mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo. What are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs. And he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you could do it by yourself, brother. And he started walking and everything like that. So when he got to, I just waited at the counter. So when he got to the counter, he didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like, he gave a, the guy a stack, something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude to carry no 20s and no 50s or nothing like that. 
And I mean like, he just said, boom. And we walked out the store. So we had to leave Atlanta and go to uh, North Carolina for a show. You understand? And um, it was him, this rapper, Sarah, and this other girl. We all got on a G a G G five jet, and we flew to uh, G four jet, and we flew to uh, uh, North Carolina. So uh, later on that, I think that afternoon, same day, um, this rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff. <laughs> and this dude, this rapper. So, uh... Burner is not the first artist to find themselves in a difficult contractual situation. This is not Diddy's first time if you understand what I mean, so what's really at risk for Burna? Remember Prince? He was out here writing Slave on his face because of his deal with Warner Bros, and don't even get me started on TLC, who were selling millions of records but were broke as a joke because of their contract. These contracts have the potential to bind an artist's whole career we're talking about control over Berna's sound, image, and partnerships. This is where things get really juicy. Like being in a relationship where your partner picks your friends, clothes, and breakfast. In a leaked interview, Berna hinted that the contract gives Diddy a cut of everything I mean, everything including his tours, merchandise, and endorsements. Burner Boy's shocking revelation had us all clutching our pearls. It turns out that he may have signed away more than just his music. Burn is left with only a crumb, as if Diddy has his fingers in all of his pies. I'm here at the door and stuff like that, like, yeah, so then, next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door, and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, oh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. He said, well, I'm going in there. I said, bro, you ain't going in there because he told me they don't want nobody to be bothering him. And he was like, yo, I don't care, man, I'm going in there. That, that bull like that. I said, yo, bro, Jesus Christ, I had to come down here and take the air out of my body before you get in that room right there. Watch, watch. He tried to bum rush me. I grabbed his and threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel. Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. And so then uh, Ja was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Gene, that's my cousin. He know me well. You know, uh, and Puff was like, yo, Gene, what happened? I said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And he was like, he just looked, Puff looked at Ja. He said, yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaking shit going on. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he said there was a lot of freaking shit going on. So that was basically that story, man. You know what I'm saying? They went back in the room. Dude felt a certain kind of way, and he left out. So we, I seen them at the concert the next day, and they tried to, you know, form up against me. But my man Frank was like, I told my man Frank, I was like, yo, Frank, put yourself in that position. Somebody trying to get in the room, and Ja told you don't let nobody get in the room. What would you do? Now, y'all could do whatever y'all want to do, man, but you know I ain't taking no losses. He said, yo, you good, you good, and that was it. Bro, when, when Ja said, you don't want to come up in there, a lot of freaky stuff is going on. You got to use your mind what they was doing with those butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that was crazy. With Diddy's hands in all his pies, you might expect Burner to be living large. But what if I told you this deal was on the verge of unleashing a whirlwind of chaos? The streets are buzzing, whispering about backstage battles that would make even reality TV look tame. At first, Burna and Diddy were all smiles and Instagram posts. They were serving us friendship goals with pictures of them in the studio, at parties, and even on yachts. It was like watching the birth of a hip-hop power duo, but behind those filters and hashtags, it was a whole different story. Things escalated quickly, resembling a hot pocket in the microwave. 
We experienced arguments in the studio that would make Simon Cowell seem mild-mannered. Creative differences turned into a battleground, and the discussions about finances became more chaotic than a pair of Crocs at Fashion Week. People, he should have enough money to he check. He put the boots to that girl? She's supposed to be a good bitch. No matter who she with. All the time he putting a groom in her. Of course he thought it was still gonna work. He thinks he's God. All right. That ain't doing shit. I raped the fuck out of that bitch, put the boots to her last time I seen her. Fuck her and her trainer, boyfriend, husband. I don't get no so, so you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever is that him? Or is that Shout around? out to Wendy Williams. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. That's what these down low bitches was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the 90s. The homo thug. She talking about Diddy. And then what's the stuff that's happening with Wendy Williams? You think this is all connection to? Of course. They've been waiting. He's been waiting. He was waiting for Kim. Remember? He was waiting. The casket was ready. She was literally casket ready. Some people are saying the whole Wendy Williams documentary that she's pretty much allegedly playing this way to keep herself safe from him, from any unaliving. It's been working for Orlando Brown. Uh, why wouldn't it work for Wendy? To play crazy. Why, why, why wouldn't it work? Hey, no. Hey. The oosh goss woosh wash is shit. <laughs> Orlando's brilliant. Right. Yeah. Y'all spent time with yeah, him. We, we did. did. Yeah. He's highly intelligent. Yes. Imagine what it's been like to wear this character for this long. No, I can always- That he does as a character. Actually, the shit he does online is the best acting he does. Is he speaking truth? Of course he is. Oof. You know, we seen quite on set. Major pain in his ass, literally. Since he was a kid. Man. Uh, and in fucking milk, running the fuck around, talking about expensive pain, now, in his ass. Wait, this is Philly you're talking about now. Wait a minute, Jack. Fuck me. Wait a minute. He's a fucking Fruit Loop. He did he fried. This is Philly. He's a deep fried period. <laughs> <laughs> he did he fried. He did he fried. He did did he do our bop. Real rap. You think that audio that they put out was real? Yeah, that was real. <laughs> Nikki put that out to here. That that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. Man. She been waiting to drop that shit on Meek. Oh. She just wasn't going to tell nobody it was Diddy, but now that Diddy out there. Why not? So then who's the guy who's claiming he recorded it? Yeah, that's the, that's oh, somebody the that got paid? Yeah, he said, like, I was yeah, standing outside the door. Yeah, somebody that got paid. Yeah. Just like it wasn't semen or fluid that J Justin Bieber was wiping away from his mouth when he brought his face up from Odell Beckham's groin in a club with Trey Songs on the lookout. The images are there. Diddy five. Hashtag no Diddy. Let's now discuss these power relations. We're talking about a situation where someone kidnapped Burner and replaced him with a Diddy clone. Diddy has more connections than a switchboard operator, and he's been in business longer than some of you have been alive. However, Burna has that row talent that makes your grandmother want to twerk, and he has the entire African mark in his back pocket. It's like watching David and Goliath, but with the music industry. 
It was like seeing someone try to drive while using the parking brake he kept pushing but didn't go very far, and you could see it in his eye when he was being interviewed. Was this the Diddy effect, or was our African behemoth losing his roar burner and feeling the heat? Things really went south during finals week when our boy appeared more stressed than a student. Without brakes, Berna began to feel as though he was losing control more quickly than a roller coaster. His music, career, and image were all evaporating like sand through his fingers, while Diddy was clinging to everything like a child with the last piece of candy. What began as a collaborative dream became a horrific power battle. Berna was out here pleading for help, but was anyone listening? It was like watching a chess game when he suddenly realized he was playing checkers. The music business can be colder than your ex's heart, and Berna was feeling that frigid right now. It's all about the money. They saw what he did to Cassie. With the kicking, the punching. They saw what they did to Cassie. They know did nobody in America like that. So now, these people are represented by a brand. Whether it's some about the music, clothing, movies. They're not going to come out and speak on nothing that has anything to do with them. And they praying that they not on the tape. Doing crazy stuff, being oiled up in the whole nine yards. They praying. So... Until the Fed say, hey, yo, listen here. <laughs> uh, we got you on, hey, buddy, we got you on this tape. And uh girl looked like she was pretty young. We're not going to, we're not going to show it, but uh, we need you to come and testify against Brother Love, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, you know, Sean Combs. That's when they're going to start talking. And they're not going to be talking in his favor. When the feds come to them and show them what they got on tape. Because if he had 250 tapes all over, 250 cameras all over the house. Somebody got caught stealing a cookie out the cookie jar. It could be your favorite pastor. It could be your favorite politician but they didn't think they was being watched and brother love was watching yeah i mean td jc haven't even came out and said anything and him and diddy was real cool amen <laughs> amen yeah man and i and i know the people in the congregation over there is shaking in their boots because this man didn't let them probably allegedly, allegedly probably led them to damnation because those people's hearts are going to be broken if that man is seen on those tapes doing anything. Because people always put their faith in the pastor instead of putting their faith in God. And what they need to do is understand that he's just a man. And he has a history it's not looking too good for him. So you feel like celebs are worried that they might be on tape? Oh, they know. That's why they ain't speaking up or saying nothing. Yeah, I was at a daddy party, but I know I ain't do nothing. Uh, When you don't know somebody's taping you, when you don't know that somebody is videoing you in some kind of form of fashion, you and you got that alcohol, you got the drugs in you, they're a little loose, bro. They let down all their inhibitions. The music is pumping. He said it himself. He got it so hot in there that you got to take your clothes off. He said that himself, bro. So a lot of them, like, like, what, 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 what was what he said? I think a lot of them was being swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> they tell off on themselves all the time, man.
You just got to listen. But why do you think Diddy had all them hidden cameras? Bro, when you that powerful, you didn't get that powerful without having one or two or maybe three ups on somebody. Did he always been the type of individual that want to have ups on the next person, no matter what they was doing? Like, he always played artists against each other. He did it to Big, he did it to Craig Mack. You understand? I said before, he did the stuff to Ja Rule, you know what I'm saying? So how the ups on Ja Rule so he could go after Jay-Z. You understand what I'm saying? So he always played those time kind of up games on people. So to have those cameras and know what he was doing, it's going to give him the ups on everybody who came to that party. Even your favorite basketball player. Ain't no party like a Diddy party. We know who said that. Burner comes out like a heavyweight champion just when you thought he was done. But Diddy isn't a pushover. We're talking about a clash of titans that could change the music. Who is going to win this battle royale, girl? Let me tell you. But a boy isn't just sitting there crying and crying our African giant is fighting back and it's getting really messy. He's out there giving us clues and interviews like breadcrumbs, and his music is cool, it's like a coded message straight out of Spice School where one minute he's singing about love, the next he's throwing shade darker than your ex's soul. Diddy's camp isn't remaining silent, though they're spinning this story faster than your head after too many tequila shots, and we're all trying to keep up. While Burna's crew is yelling free Burna louder than concert goers, Diddy's guys are out there portraying Burna as ungrateful. Now that attorneys are getting involved, it appears to be a true David versus Goliath scenario. Burns' legal team has been working diligently for a long time, perhaps driven only by Red Bull and righteous rage. Meanwhile, Doty's lawyers are likely relaxing in their opulent offices, believing they have things under control, but keep in mind that David defeated Goliath, so don't write off our African giant just yet. He may be one of the persons got caught up in the Diddy part. LeBron said that, but yeah, you might be right. You know, it sounds like he had all them hidden cameras to use it against people. I think that was said in the indictment, right? That, that, that was said in the indictment. You know, somebody, I think Dawn may have said that. I don't, I, don't, I don't know for sure, and correct me if I'm wrong. He would, even if you didn't want to do something, he would tell an individual, well, I got you on tape doing it before. And the person would feel pressured in having to do something or come and do something at the party or be at the party because he already had him on tape right then and there. But what you think when you do it the second time? He's still going to have you on tape. Those tapes is the one who's killing because people don't understand this. Little Rod, he's taping for Diddy on some occasions. When he wrote his indictment up, no, when he wrote his, um, when his, when, it, when his, when his lawyer wrote up the, uh, his briefs and submitted it, he must have had some kind of, he must have been a prosecutor somewhere or something like that, because he wrote it up like it was an indictment. You understand? Saying all the stuff that had happened. Then, people don't understand this. After he wrote it up and he had the, the, the tape, the tapes and everything, they sent that to the feds. The feds opened up a case on that. Everybody think it's happened. Oh, the feds looked at Cassie getting, Cassie getting beaten and then they just opened up a, 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 a case. Nah. I think it was more so Lil Rob and them sending the feds that information. They put in a civil suit, then sent the other stuff over to the feds, and it read like an indictment. So they had to look at it because they see some crimes that was committed in that. And lo and behold, they do a raid on the house. So, 
to get back to your question, all the footage and everything that they have is going to either help, it's going to help them get some more people or get enough people just to hang Diddy. So let me ask you, because I look at uh, Gabriel Union, and when you mention things like Jay-Z's time is coming for him, then I look at, uh, you know, Beyonce. And I say that, you know, women do have a... That country album, and any of you that buy that, she a stupid as shit. You don't give it's it no trap credit. music with goddamn a holster and a fat. hat. But she remade Jolie. That bitch. I'm gonna tell you the song she should have remade. It's a hit. It would have done great for her. She should have tried it on. Tammy Wynette. Classic. Stand by your man. Don't act like you don't know that. Now. Remake that. Stand by that. That's a real country hit. Jolene, nice. But it has a ring to it. Stand by your man. Yeah. Whoops. You. And disrespect you with other like Kathy Coriana White. All right, well, let's do it like this. Who was actually carrying his baby while you were spanking it. Why your husband don't want to put his seed inside of you? He put it in everybody else. 